this time we're going to talk about the killer and how miserable they are. When you play the killer, it's pretty straightforward. Patrol your environment, it's your house. Find those pesky survivors, whack them, grab them, put them on a hook, and then either you let them die there or you stick around and wait for their friends to come and help, and then you grab them too. You can watch their friends trying to come and help them, and that's when you pounce in, and then you're like, well, oh, I got two of you now. The killer is supposed to be super focused on his objective and it's the only thing that matters. It feels more of a personal relationship to whatever it is that you're trying to kill for. When you're the killer, the feeling of power is amazing. It's so much fun when you catch someone and you just whack them and wound them a little bit and then you let them run away a little and you, can, you know and they know that they're just leaving a blood trail everywhere. It's, it's just so much fun when you can start to feel comfortable and confident enough that you can really screw with them. Well, what have we just seen there? I'll tell you what we've seen. We've seen Dead by Daylight developers, developers of the game, the people who created the game, talking about the game before the game was released into beta, before the game was fully released in 2000. And 17. These guys were discussing the game, every facet of the game. They did videos on survivors, they did videos on killers, the generators, objectives, map design, all different facets of the game. Coming together as a video and describing exactly what they enjoy about it, why they're so passionate about the game, and all the different intricacies that people can expect when playing the game of Dead by Daylight. So, if you take that into account, listen to what you've just heard there, right? The core game mechanics, the core game focus for the killer is to what? Kill. Kill. That's the game plan. That's the strategy. That's their goal. That's their mission. That's their fucking focus is to kill the survivors. Any means necessary. You heard it from the developer in 2000. And 17. A lot of people make the comments say, look, why have they not fixed camping? Why have they not addressed tunneling? Why are they not fixing and sorting out some invisible walls, some invulnerability, something here to stop the killers standing near the fucking hook when they hook me? They've added numerous, numerous counters to camping, numerous perks that they themselves believe to be the answer and not exactly the answer or the cure as people do think it's some kind of disease right not exactly the full cure but a treatment right a counter to the game plan no matter what you're doing in the game if you're a killer and you face survivors they're going to have a game plan a strategy a tactic that they're going to try and employ whether that be heavy altruism and flashlight saves, whether that be luring a killer into head-on stuns and bullying, whether that be going up high every time they get injured so they want to use their boil-over play, they want to use their, get value from flip-flop, boil-over, whatever, whether that be always making sure they go down in a pallet, staying on the same spot so they can use power struggle value and get you know use that to their advantage that's their game plan it's their tactic it's their strategy right you talk about killers they have counters to this so counters to your boil over stuff like that is obviously slugging you're gonna have to slug you can't hook him physically you cannot right you're gonna have to slug uh slugging is counter for obviously sabo squads too Head on, you can counter by anticipating the head on. You can counter by baiting, teasing, walking in front of the locker, pulling back last second and making them pay for it. You could bait out flashlights. You can counter the flashlights by using Lightborn, using Franklin's, simply turning away, facing a wall, looking down, looking up, baiting out flashlight saves and get free hits and free downs. There's a lot of counters that go into that. Similarly, tunneling and camping has counters. They all have counters. The developers know this, and it's why they've never actively seen, looked at, or talked about camping or tunneling as if it's a problem, because they themselves know. Imagine being these developers, man, in the back of their mind and how you design these hooks. You design these hooks to be meat hooks, to be bait, to be live bait, to bring in more of your targets as a predator. You're a top predator. You're trying to bring in and lure in more of your prey that are trying to come and help their wounded prey. They're trying to come to help their wounded prey, their wounded teammates are trying to come in, save the day and rescue them from this meat hook that's used as bait right now. That's the whole premise. That's one of the tactics that was briefly mentioned, glossed over and discussed in the developer diary from 2017. 
There's probably been millions of videos that have talked about camping and brought it up as a subject, but I've never really seen this video referenced. And honestly, I'd really like to resurface this video and bring more attention back to it because it's such a small detail that back then was probably completely glossed over. And the more the game grew, the more camping a tunnel was looked at as vicious and just a villain for doing it because at that point there was a smaller community, right? So you're always getting matched up with the same people. So when you were like staying on hook and ruining someone's game or getting them out of the game earlier than they wanted and not letting them play the full game, you were targeted a lot more. You were picked on a lot more. So killers drew away from tech camping and tunneling as strategies and looked at them as a bad thing to do and tried to go away from it because at the time as a killer, we are always outnumbered, right? We're always outnumbered as far as player counts go. But back then, as a killer, you were severely outnumbered by this ever so passionate fan base of survivors that were just trying to build this game up and enjoy this new, amazing niche game. As time's gone on, gen speeds have increased and survivors have become more and more efficient by the day. Camping is now more than ever a strategy that needs to make a return on certain killers, needs to make a return on certain killer builds. You know, it's very dependent on what map you're on, what situation you're in, what perk builds you're running, whether you're a basic M1 killer or not, how efficient the survivors are playing, what the progress of the game is looking like. It's a viable strategy. Camping and tunneling are completely viable. They're counterable. There's a lot of counters to them. And there's a lot of pros and cons. There's a lot of ups and downs for killers to camp. We need to accept this as a community. We need to accept this as players. And I think in order to grow, improve, and get better as players overall on the killer side and survivor side, we just need to start looking at if this is happening, if the game plan has been employed by a killer, how are we going to counter it? How can we sort this out? And that's how, how are you going to get better? Immediately vilifying, outlawing, insulting, attacking, aggressively coming at a killer who decides to employ this game plan is not the way to improve. It's not the way to get better. It's not the way to learn the counterplay or get more confident in those scenarios. It just causes more problems, it causes more unnecessary drama. Let's just do better. If you didn't hear it the first time, I'll play the clip for you again. The very specific clip that I'm talking about that references camping as just an ordinary casual strategy when you play the killer it's pretty straightforward patrol your environment it's your house find those pesky survivors whack them grab them put them on a hook and then either you let them die there or you stick around and wait for their friends to come and help and then you grab them too so in the best way possible don't take my word for it take the words of the developers of the game back in 2017 and they have never wavered they've never wavered they've never zigzagged they've never turned their they've never turned their opinion around they've never changed their mind they've never said anything to the contrary where they believe that camping or tunneling is toxic gameplay or egregious gameplay or anything you notice all they've done is kind of stay quiet about it and just add these little boosts add these little cheeky little perks these little bonuses these little buffs these little boosts to help survivors out of this situation that in their mind, they're vocally clearly struggling with and having trouble dealing with, right? They've never gone against the grain and actively said or outlawed camping in their own game. And that's something to remember. So if you have your rule book, you got it there in front of you, you've got your quill and your ink pot, you got your pen, you got your marker, whatever you use to write, go ahead, do it. Just do it, just do it. Just put a line through it. Just put a lovely line right through that bit there. Killers should not stay near me when they hook me. Killers should only chase the person that unhooks me and not me because that's not fair. I'm allowed to heal at hook and face no repercussions. Lovely, lovely, good job. I'm allowed to get unhooked and click on a generator, cancelling all my possible tunneling counters and face no repercussions. We're getting through this together. We really are. We're getting through this together. Just one more, right? Just one more. Thou shalt attack any player who decides to play a certain way that I find difficult or hard to deal with. We've sorted it. We've sorted it together. We've come through this together. And thank you very much for coming on this journey with me. Please leave the video a thumbs up if you agree with me. It's always dangerous. It's always dangerous. Because realistically, there's four to one survivors that are going to watch this video, you know, compared to killers. Probably going to get some thumbs down. But it's okay. 
at least we talked about it. You've seen the clip, you've seen the video. You can check it out yourself. It's developer diary number four from Dead by Daylight's dev diaries back in 2017. Leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Am I reading too much into this? Am I misunderstanding the video? Maybe, maybe they're, oh, just no, it's a whoopsie. Just they didn't really mean to hint towards camping there. No, not at all. That's a viable strategy. Maybe I'm misunderstanding you. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think about camping. Let me know if you've seen this video before, man. These developer diaries, I highly doubt a lot of you have, and it's definitely worth checking out. Let me know if you've seen the video before, what you think of the video, what you think of the developer comments. Let me know how your day is going. I'll see you guys next time. This time, we're going to talk about the killer and how miserable they are. When you play the killer, it's pretty straightforward. Patrol your environment. It's your house. Find those pesky survivors, whack them, grab them, put them on a hook, and then either you let them die there or you stick around and wait for their friends to come and help, and then you grab them too. You can watch their friends trying to come and help them, and that's when you pounce in, and then you're like, well, I got two of you now. The killer is supposed to be super focused on his objective and it's the only thing that matters it feels more of a personal relationship to whatever it is that you're trying to kill for when you're the killer the feeling of power is amazing it's so much fun when you catch someone and you just whack them and wound them a little bit and then you let them run away a little and you can you know and they know that they're just leaving a blood trail everywhere it's it's just so much fun when you can start to feel comfortable and confident enough that you can really screw with them.